This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV 24 7. Good evening, you're watching NDTV with me, Rishika Bajwa. This is the show where we take your questions on the coronavirus. We're joined by a panel of expert doctors who will answer all your questions live over the course of the next half an hour. Dial us on that number flashing on your screens and we'll take all your questions about the coronavirus. Joining me on the broadcast this evening, Dr. Parmesh. He's the medical director, Diabetes Centre. He's joining us from Bangalore. Dr. Santosh Kumar Singh, consultant and endocrinologist joining us from Patna in Bihar. Appreciate you doctors for sparing the time to be with us here on NDTV. You know, I want to begin uh, by asking the first question this evening. Uh, there has been uh, in the press, press conference by the health ministry just a short while ago, it's been said that over 80% of cases that have been reported are either mild symptoms or no symptoms whatsoever. So positive cases uh, you know, being asymptomatic is a huge cause of concern. Uh, Dr. Parmesh, if I could begin by asking you, uh, you know, the, the huge worry on asymptomatic uh, patients, how does one deal with them? Uh, what would you like to tell our viewers? See, I think uh, that's been the course in most of the countries, even starting from China, that many patients have been asymptomatic. And that's a, a good thing to happen because we have seen only 20% have symptoms and only 5% develop serious symptoms and need hospitalization and ventilation. So that's a good thing that the disease is not serious on all the patients who develop it. And uh, the only precaution that we have to take because there's so many asymptomatic patients who are there who could spread the disease. Yes. We need you have universal precautions of so, uh, social distancing, hand hygiene and all these uh, precautions that we have been told again and again on the media. Right. If you follow, I think that should be good enough to prevent the disease. So I, I think what you're trying to say is that there's a bit of good and bad in the asymptomatic patients because it essentially means these are people with higher immunity, with better chance of recovery or self-recovery. But obviously, uh, you know, the downside of that entire story uh, is the fact that these could be carriers who have the potential to infect uh, another person without actually knowing uh, that they are COVID positive. So that's, of course, uh, you know, uh, the, the bit of... Uh, uh, story as far as asymptomatic patients is concerned. We'll continue to talk a little more about that because I know that, you know, it is, it's a huge cause of concern. Many uh, viewers have been calling in. But our first uh, caller this evening, Sumit, is on the phone line from Noida. Go ahead. Hi, uh, this is Sumit from Noida. I have a question. Uh, it's regarding, like, is it safe to take a walk outside, like, within our society? Since it's been, I've been having high blood pressure and walking has been advised to me. It's been quite some time right. that I've been sitting at home and uh, Dr. Kumar, you know, we've had, yes, uh, Sumit, appreciate you dialing us with your question. Dr. Kumar, if you'd like to take that on, you know, we've had these questions coming in from viewers in the past. You know, people who are heart patients or have diabetes or high blood pressure who are advised a daily exercise, you know, some form of walking. Is it advisable to go down uh, for a walk, go out for a walk? Uh, the importance is to uh, maintain that uh, six feet distance. Huh? That's very difficult when you are out with and uh, uh, to maintain that distance. So what we can do is to go for the exercises in our uh, house. And if you have uh, the rooftop, you can go and have a walk over there. So the uh, emphasis should be on minimum contact. Okay. Uh, with the uh, other individuals. Right, so that's very so that's important. So if you can distancing. actually afford to maintain that six feet distance only then, uh, you know, should you uh, perhaps be venturing out because maintaining social distance, uh, you know, is extremely important. Our next caller, Anvind, is on the phone line from Mumbai. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, good evening, doctor. Yeah, sir, uh, actually, Mike, the question is, like, is that any, like, particular food or uh, anything which can... Uh, like as far as like uh, the thing going around, people are saying that uh, people who have a strong immune system, so the uh, virus doesn't uh, harm them. 
So is there any particular uh, like nutrition or any food which can boost the immune, uh, immune system? Uh, Dr. Parmesh, would you like to take that on? Very interesting question because it has been said that those, you know, with a higher immunity can more effectively fight the disease. Some even, you know, don't even show symptoms if they have a very high immunity. Uh, that's exactly what we were talking about just a short while ago. How do you build that immunity? I think uh, it's a very relevant question and uh, in any disease condition we always forget the host. Host is one of the important factor and the immunity of the host will also always decide about the uh, consequence of the disease. And uh, when it comes to immunity it regards to the viral infections. There are a lot of uh, nutrients that have been shown even in China that uh, patients who consume more vitamin C, zinc and uh, magnesium and uh, certain kind of foods had better results uh, when it came to the uh, morbidity and mortality of uh, the viral infection. And that being the case, even if you are taking certain foods, uh, maybe home remedies and all that thing, we need to understand improving immunity is one thing, but we should not take the risk of getting exposed to the condition and uh, always uh, social distancing remaining uh, the main norm. And prevention is always better than cure. Uh, it's always good to try to improve the immunity, but we need to be uh, safe and wise. All right. Uh, our next caller, Neha Saxena, is calling from Indore. Go ahead. Uh, hello. Good evening, Vishika, and uh, good evening, all the doctors. Good evening. Go ahead. Ask your question. Yeah, my question is uh, related to uh, a procedure. What is followed uh, for the patients who have um, gone through being positive and then turning negative? Uh, from COVID-19. I mean, there are news wherein in China and South Korea, the, the patients are getting the infection for the second time. So like uh, what, in India, what is being followed? I mean, there are there is no news on any news channel about what happens after a person tests negative after being positive. Now, after that, what do they do? They do go back in their right. house. Dr. Kumar, would you like to take that on? What after you've been uh, you know, you've sort of been cured from the disease. There is nothing that tells us that you won't have a relapse. What happens to such patients? Can they still infect other people? Lots of questions regarding that. Uh, once you are cured, you have uh, majority of the cases, not all, they have adequate antibodies uh, to contract. And uh, as we all know, Anna, these people's serums have been utilized in the treatment of frank COVID patients. So they do develop uh, antibodies and they are protected from that. Uh, and moreover, they are part of our herd immunity category. And herd immunity, we, uh, when we have um, almost 50% of the population, uh, if they are, uh, uh, have contacted that, then we will be had uh, no right. further increase uh, in the incidence. So one is that. Second is, if the patient has already uh, got discharged from the hospital and he has one test positive, and even after uh, being labeled as cured and uh, off yes. dial for last three days, and he is to maintain that 14-day quarantine like others. All right. And moreover, for these reports of South Korea with reactivation, it is equally important to maintain that hygiene and uh, social distancing. So you have to also. you have to take all precautions, even if you have been cured of the coronavirus, because there's no evidence to suggest that you won't, uh, you know, be susceptible to the infection again. Saeed Iqbal is our next caller from Srinagar. Go ahead, ask your question. Yeah, uh, good evening. Yes, good evening. Ask your question. Actually, my question is that I, uh, I have been to Delhi in the month of uh, February and I came back uh, uh, in the last week of Feb. But from since then, I'm having a dry cough and that is uh, itching my throat also. First question is that do I need to take some precautionary measures due to COVID-19? And my second question is that my mother, uh, grandmother is there. She was a TB patient and she has got the surgery in Delhi only. Now she is back. She's very much healthy. But nowadays she's having the cough and she's having the breath problem. Do we need to consult the doctor for COVID-19? And what are the precautionary measures we should uh, adopt at, the, at home? Should we keep the distance from her right. or should we behave normally as doctor, we have to do? Uh, Dr. Paramesh, after listening to these symptoms, what would you advise? And especially, uh, you know, what would you advise those who are suffering from a cough at this time uh, and have elderly people at home? Yeah, I think uh, uh, this is a very important and common question because people get worried in this situation. 
but looking at this particular case, having had the cough for such a long time after my visit to Delhi, and uh, having no other symptoms of fever, breathlessness, or any other symptoms of uh, viral infection like uh, COVID, I think uh, there is very minimal chance that uh, he has any COVID, and I don't think he needs to go for a COVID test. Uh, but he needs to definitely look into other causes for the cough and uh, get himself checked for that. And the same thing also applies for his grandmother. I think he, he, you should also get your uh, grandmother checked for uh, the reason for the cough. But I don't think uh, there is any worry for uh, COVID in uh, your case or your mother's uh, grandmother's case because the other symptoms are not there right. and uh, it would have flared up by now uh, over such a long period. All right, so that's in fact a typical list of symptoms as well that we're putting out on Rishita, our screens. Rishita, Fever, like dry cough, add, fatigue are among the other symptoms. Somebody has come from abroad yes. and he is having that respiratory symptoms. And he or she should be tested for COVID, irrespective right. of he or she is having fever or not. Right. The very presence of respiratory symptoms, cough and uh, breathlessness, they are indicators. And it has been recommended to go for the COVID test if you have come from abroad. All right. So if you've traveled abroad, but in this case, uh, Mr. Iqbal had to travel history to Delhi. But obviously, if the symptoms persist, you should definitely consult a doctor, uh, you know, and perhaps uh, uh, get yourself uh, tested. Our next caller, Rohit, is from the phone line from Chennai. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, Dr. Sir. Um, since we know that the asymptomatic carriers are a big problem in the country right now, so my question is, how long do these asymptomatic people remain asymptomatic? Right. Is there any chance that they never show these symptoms or at some point they do? All right. Very interesting question. Uh, Dr. Kumar, you were, you were addressing these concerns earlier as well. Would you like to take it on? Do asymptomatic patients never show any symptoms? Do they automatically recover because of their high immunity? How does it play out in case of asymptomatic patients? Uh, the the usual infectivity of these people it's uh, to the tune of ten days, and it can vary according to uh, uh, the, the 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 whole spectrum of the disease. Uh, as you see in symptomatic patients, it goes from six to forty one days. Average right. is two weeks. But the infectivity part is before being symptomatic. The the previous three days, and for that it has been said that you quarantine uh, for fourteen days. You uh, are there uh, for social distancing in a proper way uh, for 14 days. So that is the usual period. Right. But problem is if you have reports about the positivity and the fecal positivity, they mm -hmm. can be there up to 39 days. And so these people, are on an average, 40 days uh, comes into mind uh, where we need to be cautious with all these uh, category of patients. Otherwise. Right. The, uh, but you know, uh, if I could, if I could bring in Dr. Parmesh uh, and ask a counter the, question uh, here, Dr. Parmesh, you know, we've infections. seen that the the typical quarantine period, uh, you know, in different parts of the country is 14 days. However, in Kerala, we've seen that the quarantine period is 28 days, and it has been shown that you know there are certain cases people who've tested positive after returning from Dubai, you know, three weeks later as well. Uh, Dr. Parmesh, is that a cause of concern? Should the number of days that one is in quarantine for perhaps be increased uh, to err on the side of caution? I think uh, this is a new disease and we are all learning. And uh, what we have learned from the other countries is the uh, median uh, duration of symptoms developing is five days. And the maximum duration uh, of developing symptoms has been about 11 to 14 days. Right. By 14 days, almost 97% of the patients have developed symptoms. We still have the 3% of patients who, whom we could miss out by 14-day quarantine. And if you are able to quarantine for, by logistic reasons, if you are able to quarantine for a longer period, it's better. All right. So the longer the quarantine period, the better, of course. So uh, Sudhakar is calling us from Bengaluru. Go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, Dr. Parmesh. This is Sudhakaran from Bangalore. Good evening. Can hear you? Yes, yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead, sir. Ask your question. I am a diabetic, uh, hereditary director, uh, diabetic patient last 15 years and uh, having trivolibs uh, 2 mg every day, morning, one and evening. From March 18th, I am in, uh, staying at home. My wife is also a plasma patient, asthma patient. And uh, do I need to any pro to, to take any precautions? There are bisleri water delivery guys uh, comes alternative day. 
All right. And uh, milk delivery every day, vegetable from big basket every day, all mostly right. every day. So you are taking you are uh, taking all precautions. Do you have a question, sir? Uh, should I take any extra precautions all other right. than uh, uh, Dr. Parmesh? Would you like to take that on any extra precautions for diabetes patients? You're uh, you're a diabetes specialist. Yeah, I think uh, diabetic patients are at a higher risk of developing complications and a high higher mortality rate. Right. Uh, that being uh, the case, they need to practice the social distancing even more uh, carefully, and uh, the uh, precautions uh, remain the same again for everybody. Right. But it has followed more strictly for a patient with diabetes, hypertension, smokers. And all those patients who are obese, all of them have a higher risk of developing this disease. Right. Even patients with heart disease are known to develop this disease and develop more complications. So all these patients who are more susceptible need to be more careful and follow the precautions strictly. All right. Our next caller, Lata, is calling from Mumbai. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my question is: India, we have this problem of people pulling the mask down and spitting. And when they're handling cash, what they do is they touch the tip of the tongue and then they count the notes. Yes. This being highly infectious, I just want the doctor's opinion that these two things will result in the spread of the disease. If yes, then I would request the media to increase the awareness about this thing because spitting is a big problem in India. Right, so uh, Doctor Kumar. I think there's uh, there's also you know there's also been guidelines that have been issued that uh, the, it's a punishable offence. You will be answered. fined if you're caught spitting yes. in a public place. So that's been put in place by the government. But Doctor Kumar, what would you advise uh, people who are out there in the open, especially when it comes to dealing with currency notes? I think that's a big cause of concern. Uh, we we should be very clear that the third modality by uh, the. Uh, uh, Aerosol spread. It is very. We've been talking and spitting. Uh, some states have even banned uh, the use of chewable tobacco. And yes. that is very important from diabetic point of view also that you need to avoid tobacco in any form. Spitting is very important uh, to be uh, desisted from. Uh, she has answered herself. It is very important to make the awareness that we should avoid spitting in the open spaces. Right. Uh, main uh, is just to. Uh, avoid the uh, spread of infections, what we are doing with social distancing. Uh, I just would like to add uh, what uh, Dr. P Paramesh said yes. uh, about the diabetics. You yes. should be very assured that they are not at increased risk of contracting COVID. Once they develop it, they have a poor prognosis. So All that right. is very important and very assuring for the diabetic patients. Okay. So my previous caller, he should not change anything. He should right. continue with his personal hygiene and social distancing. So that's very, that important, very important because he, if, if, you know, if you don't get the disease, then you're safe. But if you do get the disease, if you contract the infection, God forbid, uh, then the prognosis, like uh, Dr. Singh is it's saying, you know, could, could actually it's be it's a lot worse. Uh, appreciate you clarifying for that, uh, 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 clarifying that for us, Doctor. Uh, our next caller, Siddha Paswami, is dialing in from Bengaluru. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. Good, good evening. evening, Dr. Go Prabhu. ahead, ask your question. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Hello. Yes, go ahead, sir. Ask your question. Uh, Dr. Babu, good evening. Good evening. Uh, hello. My question is to Dr. Parmeet. Yeah. See, uh, we are, uh, I am diabetic for the past 20 years. Uh, and I'm being a caller, uh, I'm being a uh, senior citizen. And do you require uh, um, uh, distancing among uh, people in the house? All right. Would you like to take that on, Dr. Parmesh? What about social distancing at home? Uh, I think if all of the people at home are following the norms of social distancing, I don't think there is any uh, need for uh, distancing uh, to be practiced at right. home. But if you are an elderly person and if you are youngsters are going out and coming back, I think you need to be a little careful uh, with that, especially if any one of them develop any symptoms. Uh, otherwise, uh, there are no guidelines on uh, having a distancing in, within the home individuals. Yes. All right. So you do, you needn't maintain social distance within uh, you know the family members living in a house as long as everyone is following the same practices. But however, if somebody is uh, you know, exposed or is a frontline worker, then perhaps, uh, you know, you would advise, uh, doctor, that social distancing should be maintained. You know, I have an allied question, Dr. Kumar, if I could bring you in. What about 
uh, you know, the family members of those people who are working on the front lines, you know, whether it's health workers, uh, whether it's people working in law enforcement, whether it's people working in essential services, even journalists, for instance, what would you recommend to their families? Uh, it's it's very important if you are coming in contact with a health worker or if a person you are coming to a direct uh, person who has contracted COVID. You know, it's uh, uh, important at least ICMR has given guidelines for uh, the hydroxychloroquine prophylaxis. So it should be there and maintaining the uh, personal protection is paramount for everyone. All right. So maintain There's personal protection. But what about families? Should they stay prophylaxis. away from families? Family members I'm talking about. If you are because uh, he is one of you, right. you know, who is coming in contact with others. Yes. So perhaps Anna, maintaining social distance would be, would be the safer bet. If you are coming in contact bet. with a healthcare worker, definitely right. uh, you have to be cautious from that. Act. All right. Anurag, our next caller is on the phone line from Surat. Go ahead. Yeah, good evening, ma'am. Uh, Anurag, I am calling from Surat. I have two questions. Yes. One is, uh, what is the status of the plasma therapy trials that is going on in Kerala, Delhi and Gujarat? I think now they have started. Okay. And uh, second is the uh, there is there are reports that uh, rumors rather that the Israel has come up with a medicine to cure uh, COVID and it is hundred percent successful. Is there any information on that? All right, uh, uh, Doctor Parmesh, would you like to take on the question on plasma therapy and explain it to our viewers? I think it's not just the three states, even Karnataka and many other states yes. have now started, uh, have accepted this, but it has been accepted as a trial and they found benefit, but it has not become an universal treatment guideline. Right. See, in an emergency situation like this, uh, we have to adopt newer strategies to save patients who are sick and uh, going to die anyway. And uh, this uh, plasma therapy has definitely shown uh, good results. The uh, Israeli technology that you are talking about is uh, placental uh, stem cells, which has been tried only in seven patients so far and has given very good results in serious uh, patients. Right. Uh, uh, it's yet to come into the uh, general practice yet. I, I think if it's good and encouraging, it will come out soon. All right. What about uh, what about medication, Doctor? Is there, Doctor Singh? Would you like to add anything? Anything on medication that you'd like to advise? Uh, you know, viewers about use or abuse of medication? Uh, medications uh, in uh, mild cases, moderate cases, there are trials even in severe cases for hydroxychloroquine. Right. Otherwise, the majority of the drugs which we are using, it is mainly for the severe and critically ill patients. Right. You know, be it remdesivir or lopinavir or uh, even interleukin 1 beta. Now, if you have a cytokine storm, you know, where you have increased IL 6. If it is more than you, you for the IL-6 uh, antagonist. So those majority right. of those uh, agents which are being used, it is mainly for severe infections. All Mild, right. moderate, severe hydroxychloroquine is the drug which All is right. being tried worldwide in majority of the patients. I'm afraid I'm completely out of time, but appreciate you, Dr. Parmesh and uh, Dr. Santosh Singh for joining us on the broadcast, uh, for taking out the time to answer the questions that you have. Uh, thank you so much. A big thank you to all the callers who've dialed in as well. That's all we have time for on the show this evening. Thank you for watching.